To be called a nigger, it just starts a lot of rage in you. And I've been called nigger so many times that it's a hatred, anger built opinion. Robert Porter grew up in the 50s in Watts, Los Angeles. He remembers how the murder of Emmett Till in 1955 affected him. He was just nine years old. They castrated him, they lynched him, they throw his body in the river. The mother said, we're gonna have an open casket. That was one of the things that turned me when I was young. You're just as good as anybody else. Robert's mother instilled in him a sense of self-worth and value in the midst of the racism and hatred around him. We were a single family with six kids. She said, you're gonna make it, you better than that. Here in Long Beach, California, is where Robert Porter experienced and saw many social injustices that propelled him into intense hatred for the next 30 years of his life. When Robert was 14, he and his family moved to Long Beach. During the 60s, the racism he saw only intensified. One such injustice was the incident that incited the 1964 Watts riots that left 34 dead. Start throwing bottles and start shooting, and next thing you had a riot. And so the police at the time, they just disrespected black people. Then, at 17, Robert and his friends were harassed by white officers when they were caught out after curfew. He took me to the place where it happened. So we got to the corner, police rolled up, said, get against the wall. Hands on the wall. Yes. I was on my way home. This is the very wall. They had it lined up like this. All right, what are you doing past curfew? Did you think that you were going to lose your life? Well, they had, they, they had the guns on. They could, you you could have lost your life. Robert became a radical follower of Malcolm X. Not only that we're as good as the white man, but better than the white man. He represents a, a manhood. You see, white people are trying to dehumanize us. They say, we have a right to declare ourselves to be a man. That's what the Black Panther's about. Dane Brown made a song, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And everybody started uniting. So we're not going to take this Uncle Tom stuff no more. When he was 17, he was drafted into the Army. After a year and a half, Robert was honorably discharged due to poor eyesight. When he wasn't working, Robert threw himself into partying and fighting. But I was type person just, you know, you weren't gonna intimidate. Did you ever have any relief from your hatred? It was hard. Uh, <laughs> so much stuff going down. I just didn't like white people. I had to put it that way. Certain ones, I like the liberals. I like the Jane Fonda, the Kennedys. I like people who were for blacks. While Robert was fighting an outward war, he was also facing serious health challenges. His doctor diagnosed him with prostate cancer. One week later, Robert was in excruciating pain, barely able to move. He was watching the 700 Club when the host gave an invitation for salvation. He can never reject you because he's already given up Jesus Christ to die for you. And then the man said, there's no sin that God won't forgive you and God can heal you. And he said, if you have faith, believe, you know, get up and down this number. And so I was hurting so bad, excruciating pain. So I got uh, off that floor and dialed that number. And then the man prayed for me. I said the sinner's prayer. He said, you just got saved. Then Robert asked a member of the prayer team to pray that God would heal him from prostate cancer. He said, do you believe the Lord can heal you? And I said, yes, I do. And so we, he prayed for a healing. So we hung the phone up. I fell back and then I saw Jesus on the cross. And then I felt a peace over me. Lord, thank you. Thank you. I know I was saved because the pain was gone. Robert knew he was healed. He went back to the doctor to confirm it. He said, well, Mr. Porter, we can't find nothing. Over a period of time, God also healed Robert's heart from 30 years of hatred. And all of a sudden, it went no more about knowing about, you know, radical stuff. I had a desire for the Word of God. As I got into the Word, found that Jesus loved everybody. He didn't just die for the African American. He died for everybody. The hatred that I had for white people God has completely removed out of my heart. I look at people as people, not as a white person or whatever. People as people. He even learned to forgive those who abused him in the past. If you don't have Christ in your life, you know, it's, hard, it's almost impossible in the natural to forgive. We're talking about a supernatural power, which is Jesus Christ. 
Today, Robert is cancer free and has a message for others who are victims of racism and hatred. Hatred because you have cancer or arthritis or uh, ulcers or whatever it is, you need to forgive because Jesus forgave us. Uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Love is the key to everything. And so I have love in my heart now, I love people. And it's uh, more better to be loving than walk right with hate and anger and malice and bitterness and it's just, it, it'll kill you. He transformed my life, he healed me, he blessed me. You know, he, he turned my whole life around, a complete transformation. But if you don't know Jesus, you need to, you need to, you need to know Jesus. That's all I can tell you because there's nothing better than the joy, the peace you have.